Hey cruisers, welcome to the weekend. Welcome to the live stream. We're so, so happy to have all of you here. It's been probably three weeks since we've been live and I have missed all of you guys. So everybody can see us okay, hear us okay. Everybody's doing well with their technology. I've lost my live chat, so I'm hoping everybody else can see what's going on. You got, you got everything okay on your end, Mr. Chris Tips TV? Awesome. Well, since I can't see all of you guys, I'll tell you what we're doing tonight. This is going to be fun. So tonight we're talking about 10 crazy things you can do on a cruise ship. It's funny because I was thinking about this and I was thinking, I don't think that you could do any of these things that I have on my list 10 years ago. And tonight is not all about us telling you the things that we think you can do. We want to get the dialogue going. We want to hear all of the crazy things that you can do on a ship, so get ready to participate, you guys. So we have a couple of action items for you tonight. First of all, tonight's episode is sponsored by our awesome friends at CruiseLine.com, where as you guys know it, say it with me, you can find reviews, tips, and photos from real everyday cruisers. We have a link in the description of this video. You've got to go check out to CruiseLine.com. You've got to download Shipmate app and add me as a friend. I am Cruise Tips TV, all one word, no spaces, and you got to set a price alert for your next cruise because if you're if you don't you're totally missing out what what you do is when you search for a particular cruise on cruiseline.com find that cruise and once you find the date that you're looking for the ship on the right hand side there's a little tiny box that says get price alert you click the box you enter your email address and cruiseline.com emails you when the price goes up and down it is the coolest thing ever i always have a minimum of five of them set at any one time to watch cruise prices so trust me this is something i've been doing for years you got to check it out a couple of other things we would love for you to do would be to jump on our email list. Right at the top of the description of this video, there is a link to get on our email list. I'll be totally honest with you about why we want you on our email list. There is no guarantee that we can stay in touch with you by YouTube. There's no guarantee that we can stay in touch with you by Facebook. I want your contact information in my life, regardless of what happens on a social media platform. And the only way to do that is to get you on the email list. I generally don't send out an email more than once a week. They're almost always episode updates, life updates, telling you when we're going live, talking about our latest videos, our latest podcasts, all that. What? You are smiling all feistily That's over there. That's because you look really good and everyone's noticing how oh. good you look. Oh, really? Yes, you look, you look very nice. Oh. Well, thank it's you. It's a Mother's Day glow, pre-Mother's Day glow. Is it? Maybe it's my new Mother's Day ring. Do you guys want to see my new ring? Am I going to embarrass you? So hubby bought me a beautiful anniversary band for Mother's Day. Unfortunately, it's a little bit big. I'm going to pull it off and hold it up for you. It's very beautiful. And we got it at Costco. If any of you like jewelry shopping at Costco, you know that they have beautiful things. It's actually meant to go on this finger, but it's a wee bit too big. So we're going to a jeweler tomorrow to get it resized. It was a wonderful, good deal. He's been wanting me to have a new ring for a very, very long time. The story behind it is that my wedding rings, um, when we got married, we were young and we were very, very poor. And so my ring is an estate piece. What that means is we went to a jewelry store and we looked at all the rings. And the truth of the matter is the one that I wanted was actually an estate piece. The ring that I had in mind, in my mind, I couldn't find it new and I found it and it was beautiful and it was a good deal and it's lasted for 21 years. It's a little bit um, thinning on the back so I think we're gonna get it uh, reinforced as well when we go to the jeweler but I'm a happy girl because mama's got a new ring. Maybe that's why I'm glowing. Anyway, it's so pretty. So I can't see the chat, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, so I need to get it back. Oh, I think I just got it. Let's see, well, we'll work on it. Anyway, so last bit of housekeeping before we jump into the topic because I don't like to go too long without doing that. Um, you guys need to listen to our podcast. We're having so much fun. Mr. Cruise Tips TV and I are recording podcast episodes every week. We have so many for you to choose from. I think we have 11 episodes now, and last week's episode was 10 Things I Wish I Knew Before My First Cruise, and you can also link to that, get to that in the description. And I officially, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, I don't know why, but I cannot see the chat. I think something's wrong, so I'm going to refresh. Now, we're going to go ahead and get started with the top 10 crazy things you can do on a ship that I'm going to say, I just don't think that you could do 10 years ago. And at some point, I hope my chat will come back. I'm totally going to refresh and log back in. But let's start with the list because I don't want to keep you all waiting. But I'm, I do want to be in the chat. This is no fair. I got to have some fun. Oh, live now. Okay, there's everybody. Now it's going to start playing and I'm going to need to pause myself. Yep. Pa oh, yay. I see everybody. Do you guys like my new... Um, 
my new plant. Isn't this cute? So this is from um, Trader Joe's. It's like a little wine glass cactus. It was like $7 or something, but it's attracting little flies. There's little flies everywhere. So gross. Anyway, enough of the nonsense. You, you are all over the road today. I am all over the road. Are we going to talk about the 10 things? Yes, or? we're going to okay, talk about checking. the 10 things. Okay, so my number one first thing I want to tell you that I think is absolutely crazy that you can now do on a ship, not just one ship, but pretty soon on five ships is pew, 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 laser tag. I think it's absolutely unbelievably cool that you can do laser tag on both Norwegian and Royal Caribbean. So on Royal Caribbean, you can do the Battle of Planet Z. On Symphony of the Seas, Independence of the Seas, and Mariner of the Seas. Did I miss any, you guys? Do they have it on Harmony? I just don't know. I'm not sure. But of course we know. You can also do it on Norwegian's Joy and Norwegian Bliss. Junior Editor and I did laser tag on Norwegian uh, Bliss last year on the inaugural sailing. And I gotta tell you, it is the most crazy fun 10 minutes that you can possibly have on a cruise. And if you're going to do it on one of these ships, if it's an open air uh, venue like it is on Norwegian Bliss, do it at night, it's amazing. So that is my number one. I think it's so cool. I think that on some of these ships, they convert another area uh, of the ship to do it. Like I think they convert ice rinks sometimes on Royal Caribbean, I'm not 100% sure. Stay tuned too, because I'm going to ask you guys to talk about the crazy things that you can do on a cruise. I want to hear your thoughts as well. All right. You like that, Steve? Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> I mean, right? It's, uh, it's kind of what it is. It's pew, pew, pew. All right. Hey, Clay Kowskis are in the house. Oh, I see a lot of fun vloggers are here. Sharon at sea is here. You guys have some channels you need to follow tonight. Nurse Nancy, we got all our vlogging friends in the house. If I missed anybody, I'll find you. I will, I will track you down and, and I will mention you. Okay. Number two, fun, crazy, cool thing I actually haven't done yet, and that is Carnival Sky Ride. That's the one that looks like a little bicycle that goes around the ship. You know, you're up high, but your pedals are suspended. There's no wheel touching the ground. You are literally on a sky ride. So it's kind of like riding a bike, but not really that complicated. I think it's probably a really good workout. And I'm wondering what on earth happens when it's high winds? Don't you think that's probably like a really incredibly good workout, you guys? I don't know about that. Anyway, I would love to do that around the two lane suspended course on Carnival. That is on my wish list of cray cray things I would like to do on a cruise. Number three, is another one I have done, and I know some of you have done this too, and that is go-karting at sea. I was so excited to jump on the go-karts on Norwegian Bliss, and I have to tell you, the experience was 10,000 times better, that was a little bit of an exaggeration, than I expected. It was so fun, it was so fast, it was so thrilling, and it felt very safe. For those of you who are feeling like, oh, you're gonna fly off the edge of the ship, no, 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 it's super contained, feels really, really safe, but oh my goodness sakes, I would love to jump on Norwegian Joy and see what the original first ever race track at sea was like before Norwegian Bliss, so I'm, I'm super excited about that. Okay, you guys ready for number four? Number four is another one on Norwegian Bliss, and this, one's a, this one was something I was chicken to do, so I would consider this without a doubt in the top five craziest things that you could do on a ship, and that is the drop slide on Norwegian Bliss. This is a slide that is so intense, intense that they had to build an escape hatch, you guys, for people who accidentally got stuck in the slide. So why would you get stuck on a slide that's super, super fast and that drops you straight down? Well, I guess it's all about what you wear. So if you wear too much swimsuit, you can actually get stuck. So they encourage women to wear bikinis instead of one piece suits and men to wear the skimpiest <laughs> swimsuit you can find. No jewelry is allowed. All wedding rings, rings, jewelry, everything must come off and you have to wear the skimpiest suit you can so you don't get stuck. I was too chicken to try it on the inaugural cruise because my husband wasn't there to comfort me and film me. I probably would have done it if I could have done it on camera, but junior editor was too busy hanging out in the kids center to film mom. All right. <clears throat> That was number four. Number five is the skydiving simulators on Royal Caribbean. How crazy is that, that you can do skydive simulation on the high seas? So if you're a real 
thrill seeker on some Royal Caribbean ships you can now skydive or at least simulate it. They've partnered with iFly as many of you know and you can try out the rip cord simulator on your cruise. So it's about 60 seconds long. It's a very short experience but you get to kind of dive in a wind machine with an instructor by your side. Super cool. Definitely top five. Okay number six is something that I would so do. I would have done this 10 or 15 years ago. I'm not sure I'd do it now, but that is getting scuba diving certified at sea. Yep. Royal Caribbean still offering Patty Discover Scuba Diving program on several of their ships. Quantum class ships, including Anthem of the Seas, several Oasis class ships, three Freedom class ships, and four Voyager class ships will absolutely allow you to get scuba certified on one of their ships. I think that is the best way to do it. Totally immersive, get her done, super, super fun. So that was number six. And I'm totally missing out on any of the chat, but I'll get in there. We're gonna finish our list. We have four more, number seven through 10, and then I wanna hear all about what you guys think are some crazy things you can do on a ship. Number seven, ooh, I really wanna do this one, and I haven't yet. That is to visit the ice bar on Norwegian Getaway. Norwegian cruisers, please tell me if you can do this on any other Norwegian ships or if it's just Getaway. I know it is a New York inspired ice bar, so I'm thinking it's just on the Getaway. And I would like to pause for a moment and thank Dana very much for the super chat. Thank you so much, Dana. I appreciate you. That was a very nice gesture. So yeah, you can sip and shiver in one of those. Of course, they give you really, really warm clothing to wear, but we're talking about a bar that is kept at incredibly low temperatures, and they have ice sculptures in there, and they have drinks that are New York themed. So I think that you've got like, you've got sculptures of the Brook, uh, ice sculptures of the Brooklyn Bridge, the Chrysler Building, and the Statue of Liberty, and I think New York inspired drinks or a Big Apple themed drinks menu. So that sounds really fun. Has anybody ever done that? Let us know in the chat if you have done Norwegian's uh, ice bar. Oh, the Epic has the ice bar, Ella said. Okay, good to know. I kind of had a feeling that they probably have done that. Jared, welcome to your first live chat. We're happy to have you here. Okay, let's keep going, guys. We've got eight through 10 left. Number eight is a good one, and that is the slide on the Ultimate Abyss on Symphony of the Seas. What other ships have Ultimate Abyss, you guys? Does Harmony have it, or is it just Symphony of the Seas? So Ultimate Abyss is not a water slide. It's two side-by-side, 65-meter -side, long slides that drop a rider 10 decks from deck 16 to deck six, and while you're flying through the tunnel, you're also treated to these flashing lights, uh-oh, that sounds scary, and an audio system which gives you the feeling of something chasing you. That's spooky. Have you guys ever tried this? Let me know. Daisy, thanks for the compliments on my blouse. It's free people from either Macy's or Nordstrom Rack. I'm not sure which one. Donna, welcome to the live chat. It's your first time. Ah, Sidonia Waymer. I hope I'm saying your name right. It's a beautiful name, by the way. You went on the ice bar in Epic and it was nice and cold. Hey, Sidonia, what did they give you to wear in the ice bar? Tell us in the chat. I'd love to know. All right. Oh, okay. Travel with Susie. You regret not doing the ice bar. Yeah, do it next time. Okay, next up, guys, is a way to chill out on two different types of ships, though. You can chill out in, wait for it, the Snow Grotto on, I believe it's all of Viking Cruises um, ships, or the snow room on MSC Seaside. So yeah, in the spas, they actually have snow rooms. The snow rooms are kind of designed to be something that you do in between the, um, the more sauna type um, treatment, so in conjunction with them. And apparently it's based on a Scandinavian bathing ritual, which involves alternating hot and cold therapy. So it's apparently supposed to leave you feeling invigorated and improve your circulation. I know if I started my day every day with a spa treatment, or not a spa treatment, but a visit to the sauna and a snow room, I would definitely feel rejuvenated. <laughs> Instead, what? We all have our morning commutes, our coffee that we're like holding on to, right, for dear life, but let's swap it out, you guys. Let's go for the, let's go for the sauna and the snow room. That sounds so good. Oh, so good. All right. Oh, Ruth, who's new to the chat tonight, has been to the ice bars in New York and they are super great. Awesome, Ruth, that's so cool. All right, 
See what we got here. You guys ready for number 10? This is the last one. I gotta tell you, this one's predictable. I, I had to choose this one because it's kind of different from anything else that we talked about tonight, but it's predictable. And that is to be served by a robot bartender, of course, on Royal Caribbean. You guys have all seen the robot bartenders. The robots even have names like shaken and stirred that prepare your drinks. I think it's so cute. And so my question is, guys, when you get... <laughs> when you get one of your drinks from the bartender, you've got 30 spirit options, 21 mixers. Do you tip the robot? What do you think, Mr. Crucif? Steve, are you tipping your robot? Sure. Sure. You're just a nice guy, huh? What do you guys think? Are you tipping the, the robot? <laughs> John G., thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. So yeah, guys, that's our top 10 list of crazy things you can do on a ship. I know that was not an inclusive list. So now is the time, you guys. Even if you've typed it already, tell me either the craziest thing you've ever done on, the sh on a ship or something crazy you've seen someone else do or something you want to do. Get the party started. Let's go. Ishmish went on the snow room on escape and someone had built a snowman, even had coffee stirrer arms. How cute. <laughs> that is so funny. Ooh, Jade43 says, I can't wait for the bionic, bo bionic bar on Ovation. Not until March though. Um, looks like Kristen has been to a 40 below room in Alaska. Ooh, 40 below. What did you have to wear? Oh my gosh. Lindy wants to know some luggage, some luggage advice. Let's help Lindy, you guys. I'll give you my opinion. She said, first time cruiser, what size luggage do you recommend? Hard or soft, does it matter? Lindy depends on if you're driving or flying, if you want to go carry on only or not. Our family has started going carry on only. So we like, generally speaking, we like hard side spinner luggage, but we've recently fallen in love with the eBags mother load. Uh, brand which also comes in a spinner so the mother load is half soft side and half hard side it's really good if you're traveling with a laptop it has a beautiful laptop compartment in it and we absolutely love it if you message me on Facebook I can send you a link to the product but it's one of my favorites if you're on a budget I suggest you go to TJ Maxx Marshalls and Ross and look for luggage there they have wonderful wonderful selection okay oh yes Karen I would say that's crazy too I'm not even gonna repeat it back but I heard somebody's podcast where they did an interview with that cruise, and um, yeah, no thank you, but whoa, that's wild. Daisy said, full pajamas in boleros. Bianca said, ice skating on the allure of the seas was super fun. Jessica wants to zip line on our first cruise. Jessica, I left zip lining off this list, but that is a very good one. Dave and Brandy also did the sky ride on the horizon. How was it, Dave and Brandy? Did it get when it got windy? Did it? Did you meet a lot of resistance or was it pretty easy? Ah, Kimberly, hey Kimberly. Kimberly's in the house. She said ropes course and zip line on Norwegian getaway. So scary at first, but then so fun. So you've done it, Kimberly? I wanna see pictures, send me pictures. That's so cool. Um, Beep, thank you so much for the super chat. Beep says, we'll be getting snow when we cruise on the Rhine River. Drop Junior Editor off at Grandma's and join us. Um, junior editor and grandma, though, would want to go on the river cruise, especially grandma. She's a river cruise fanatic. So I'm sure that we would just bring the whole family. Okay, thank you for the super chat, by the way. You're so sweet. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Okay, Nurse Nancy said the sky ride is easy. Cool. Ah, uh, yeah, Alicia, you're going to love those go-karts on Bliss. They're super fun, and you can either ride solo or with someone next to you. I wanted to do it with Junior Editor, but again, he was in the kids' zone, and he just loved the kids' zone on Norwegian, and so he didn't go with me. He missed out. So Dave and Brandy said it was smooth and easy. Okay, that makes me feel better because, honestly, I'm not a very good cyclist. I'm the kind of girl who would hit a curb and, like, fly off the bike and tumble on the grass, and, yes, that perhaps did happen in my college years and I wasn't intoxicated, I was just riding to class with the backpack and yeah, maybe that happened. Anyway, so let's see. Oh no, Ryan said he saw kids get stuck on the sky ride and the other car had to push them. Oh, that's funny. I've seen that happen with zip lines too. Junior did the ropes course on MSC's um, Maravilia and that was really fun, the Himalayan ropes course and a beautiful day. You'll see that in our vlogs, guys. Next vlog, yeah. Next vlog. Next vlog. Yes, Milana Lane. You hit it on the head, girlfriend. They are putting a roller coaster on a ship soon. The roller coaster, the first roller coaster at sea will be on Carnival Mardi Gras. So that's gonna be very exciting. Uh, Tracy said, I didn't hear you mention anything crazy to do on a princess cruise. Hmm. I don't you know, know how to- I don't know if 
princess has? I'm not I sure mean, there's in the crazy in the crazy business. Skip tea. I mean, that's skipping crazy. tea is crazy. <laughs> Right. Good. It's crazy. Skip tea. That's crazy. Don't That's do about it. as crazy as it gets on Princess. So if you're looking for non crazy, now you know. Princess and Holland America are for you. Hillary wants to know what I'm drinking tonight. Hillary, I've just started to enjoy my little, and pardon the large straw, but you guys don't want me drinking out of the glass while I've got a microphone on. It's very noisy when it gets near my mic. Um, this is my standard sherry drink, inspired by Princess Cruise, actually. Um, it's gin, fresh squeezed grapefruit juice. Fresh squeezed lime juice with my little, my little machine I've got there, and some Lacroix, lime Lacroix tonight. This is not very strong though because I um, I don't like to drink too much too quick while I'm on camera. That's not a good idea because I get red. I get really red. I'm kind of a, a light skinned young lady, and so I just kind of taking it slow here, but. It keeps me warm. That's that's a good thing. All right, let's see what else. Mike and Cheryl said the bar wars on Princess. Okay, that's fun. Tabitha said, has anybody done Carnival's Thrill Theater Simulator? Um, Nancy Allen, RN, says horse racing on Princess. Woohoo! I know, right? <laughs> Miguel said skipping high tea. He liked that. He thought that was really funny. That's awesome, Miguel. I'm cracking up about that. Oh my gosh, no kidding, crazy cat traveler. How many liability waivers do you have to sign? And that is not a rhetorical question. You are right. You have to sign some kind of a please don't sue us form for every single one of these activities, guaranteed. Jim said, princess, stay awake past 8 p.m. Crazy. And lately, Jim, that's us on a cruise. Our family staying up past 8 p.m. Read Mr. Cruise Tips TV over there on Maravilia in Europe is crazy. Um, hubby was like doing this in the dining room at dinner, right, babe? I'll it's never let you story, live it down. True story. My nocturnal I work hard, dude, though. huh? I'm a hard worker. You're a hard worker. Yeah. You were waking up at five in the morning, which is not your That's natural true too. your natural rhythm. So yeah, Jim, he got he he was wild and crazy, wild and crazy. Thank you, say hey for reminding everybody to hit the like button. Okay, so Dave Savard said the sea walk is about as crazy as Princess gets. Yeah, Dave, right? Woo! Although for some people, that's terrifying. If you have a fear of heights or if you have vertigo or something like that, I got to tell you, that could be pretty crazy. Um, Florida nurse needs some tips for parking and storing her car at the Port of New York, if anyone knows. All right. Okay, Beep, that's a funny princess one. Beep said, on princess, trying to drink my 15 limit, but only got up to 12. We'll keep trying. Oh, no, that's not good news, Chippy. We're not going to do that. Okay, let's see if we have some questions from way earlier that we can answer. I think we can. Margaret Hobbs said, hi, Sherry. Watching while ironing my cruise clothing. My packing cubes have me confused. Oh, no. Margaret, don't be confused by the packing cubes. We can help you. Let us know. Miguel Espinoza Sid says, thank you so much for doing the podcast. I've been listening to it every week. Absolutely awesome for commuting. Tons of information. Your husband is getting better and better on the podcast. I told you, honey, stop being so hard on yourself. I'm getting better and better at editing myself out. <laughs> deliberate silence. That's my deliberate silence. You guys, what is his problem? He's so good. You're so good and you're funny. You're way more funny than me. I'm not funny. I'm just not. You're funny and you're staring at me. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's keep rolling along. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I'm gonna give you all kinds of awkward silences today because I know it's fun. Judy wants to know when is the best time to go to Alaska. Judy, we really like early, excuse me, mid to late May, but other people may have other ideas. Okay, Jill Hahn said, would you ride the roller coaster on a cruise? No water slides for me. Yeah, Jill, I will do anything on a cruise, pretty much. Anything, yeah, I would do that in a heartbeat. Would you? Would you ride the roller coaster on a cruise? How about eat a spleen sandwich? Ew, that was so gross, the spleen sandwich. If you guys haven't seen that vlog, go back and watch it. That was nasty. Um, it's, it wasn't the taste, it was the smell. That was our Malta, no, excuse me, our Palermo vlog from MSC. All right, Jean Wilson, first time in the chat. I really listened to enjoy your program. I'm going on a cruise with my family in July on MSC Armenia. Any advice for us? I hear Armenia is great. Sounds like you're going to Cuba, Jean. I would um, definitely pack very, very cool, breathable cotton clothing if you're going to the Caribbean at that time of year. It's probably gonna be very warm and humid. Focus on comfortable shoes and do something awesome in Cuba and tell me how you like it. 
All right, Jenny Estes says, Cruise Tips TV, I'm going on Carnival Miracle in November and was wondering about the Las Coletas excursion in Vallarta. Is it worth the money? Okay, cruiser friends, tell Jenny, is Las Coletas worth the money? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. Is that Shakespeare? I don't know. Do it. It's fabulous. So much fun. I know people who do it repeatedly and it never, ever, ever gets old. So do it. Hey, Jerry, welcome to the chat. First time live for Jerry. All right, Linda Lowry says, what size carry-on do each of you take? Do you have a video showing packing carry-on only? Yes, Linda, we have tons of them. Just go to our packing playlist here on the channel. So when you're at our main page, you'll see an area called playlist right underneath videos. And um, just look for the packing ones. We also have a packing carry-on only playlist for you. All right, um, Crazy Cat Traveler said, how hard is the rock climbing wall on Norwegian? For a newbie, do you mean on a oh, Royal Caribbean? Yes, Royal Caribbean. I'm not sure, Crazy Cat Traveler. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, couldn't get that out. Who knows? Who's been on the uh, rock climbing wall? Well, we've seen it on Liberty of the Seas. Didn't look hard. It didn't look hard. Uh -huh. No, I mean, I think it's as hard as you want it to be. Yeah. No one's going to force you to go all the way up. You go as far as you want, come back down if you can't finish. Anybody know if they have an easy side and a hard side on that? Very interesting. I'd like to know. Ruth said, haha, I remember that sickening sandwich blog. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty gross, Ruth. Ooh, nasty. Okay, Sharon at Sea, one of our favorite creators, is saying, yes, Las Coletas is great. Great food, great service. It's awesome. Yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you guys. And Sharon, wouldn't you agree that the transportation over is super fun too? You go in a beautiful catamaran. It's a very stable and smooth ride. You'll generally see lots of wildlife. I've seen flying fish. I've seen cool rays. I've seen dolphins. I've seen whales. And the staff are fabulous. And the food really, really is good. My mom and I, when we were there, we got massages while well, Junior and Hubs hung out at the beach and the massages were so inexpensive and so good. There's just so many ways to relax there, whether you're sitting in a hammock. I sound like a commercial. It's so good though. Whether you're in a hammock, you're hanging on the beach, you could play in the sand all day. You could do, you could swim with sea lions. Is it sea lions? Yeah, I think so. So, so good. Yeah, Susie, I've heard that too. N. Pierce, excellent question, N. Pierce. Gratuities are charged per person in the stateroom. So yes, you will be charged per person. Even children are charged full gratuities. So third and fourth passengers in a stateroom are also charged full gratuities, okay? Eric Penchenko says, what's a good excursion in Juneau? Eric, we have a really fun video for you to watch. Go to our Alaska playlist and look for the Juneau vlog. Just type in Juneau Cruise Tips TV. It'll pop right up and you can see how many things you can do in Juneau in one day. One of our favorite things to do there is to make sure you visit Mendenhall Glacier and hike out to Nugget Falls. You can combine that with a salmon bake. You can combine it with whale watching. You can combine it with nothing. There's a lot of ways to do it. Donna Colburn said, are you going to book Panorama? Absolutely, Donna, you bet we are. I would imagine we'll probably be on Panorama early 2020, um, and maybe we'll get to see it sooner. You never know. We'll let you know what happens. Super excited. Sue Pola said, just put together my wall mount itinerary for Alaska. Thanks to your vlog. Sue Pola, you're very welcome. Sue Pola, are you a student in our masterclass, or did you get that from our, um, from our last video where we did the cruise organization binder. I'm curious to hear. Crazy Cat Traveler said, got my first cruise binder today from Dollar Tree. We got a little binder theme going here. You guys must have watched our how to make the ultimate cruise binder video. It's fun to make your binder. It feels good. It makes me feel so organized and in control. I know that you don't need all that paper and you can keep everything electronically, but don't you have a fear of like losing your phone? I do. I have a fear of that. I need paper, so... Yeah. Okay, so Ginger said they did a Jeep excursion. Amazing way to roll around the city on your own schedule. Uh, Ginger, was that in Juneau? That's really cool. Uh, thank you, Brenda. Brenda's enjoyed videos because of us. Your husband and you have taken five cruises in the last three years. You're hooked. Love Cruise Tips TV. Thank you, Brenda. That's really sweet. I appreciate that. That's awesome. We'd love to be ambassadors for cruising. So much fun. Okay, Supola, you are a master class student. I kind of thought so. Awesome. Yeah, Steve. Organizers unite. Yes, Christine, thank you very much for reminding me that Princess Gratuities just went up in cost. It's been quite some time since Princess raised their gratuities. Christine, I believe it was a dollar up per person, so $7 per week per person increase. So yeah, Meredith, when is our next cruise? 
we're finalizing some stuff right now. We actually have three to four cruises loosely planned, but not nailed down. And as soon as we can get them nailed down, we'll have a fun episode where we announce at least the first couple. But I can tell you, you're going to be surprised, I think, at least by one of them, maybe by two. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, we've got some good stuff going. Kimberly said they're doing Mendenhall Glacier and Salmon Bake in Juneau. You just booked it. I love that combo, Kimberly. In fact, when we did the, the Salmon Bake, the Glacier, and the Whale Watching, I felt like it was a lot. It was a long day. Just the Salmon Bake and the Glacier gives you more time at Mendenhall. You guys will like that hike, by the way, out to Nugget Falls, where Cozy Shoes take a rain jacket for the family and some shoes that are kind of water resistant and then enjoy it. It's uh, so good, so fun. Um, cool. Ruth wants to know if all gratuities should be paid up front. You know what, Ruth? It's just a matter of personal preference. If you don't want a big bill at the end of the cruise, pay them beforehand, prepay. I've never prepaid them, but it's certainly um, a matter of personal preference. Okay, we're gonna hang around for about five more minutes. I'm gonna see if there's any more questions coming in and see. Not yet, Ella. We got to get to 100K before we start talking about it. You guys are bad. Okay, let's see here. Ray has been on 20 cruises, all with Princess. Ray, of those cruises, what was your favorite itinerary? Let us know. I would love to hear. Don said, just printed my checklist from the master class to get ready for our Carnival Vista cruise in June. They've been so helpful, and this will be our first cruise in 25 years. Things have changed. I know, Dawn. They've changed so much. My first cruise was in, I think it was 1990 or 1991, and it's just absolutely and totally transformed. On my first cruise, the, the dancers in the show were also booking the excursions, the shore excursions. Like, they went from the show staff to, like, shore excursion staff. Okay. Annette, we would love to tell you what the master class is. Mr. Chris TV, how hard would it be for you to link to the master class in there? while I explain it. Do you want me to do it? No, you got it? Okay. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is, Annette. The master, our Cruise Tips TV Academy, which we also refer to as the master class, is a sequential cruise training course that we created. It costs $24.99, but you can use the code all aboard for $5 off the course. You have 20 videos and a ton of packing and planning checklists to help you sequentially understand what you need to do to plan the perfect cruise. It is designed to help you get a refresher on cruise planning in order. So you could watch all of our videos here on Cruise Tips TV and get a really good cruise education. You could watch tons of other YouTube videos and get a great cruise education. But what people were telling us they wanted is a sequential step-by-step -step training program. So we created it last October. It's super inexpensive, it's so fun. And once you're done with it, you get to join our private Facebook group for students and coaches. So we have all of our students over there and a bunch of experienced cruisers to help answer questions so you get ongoing support when you're done. It's really cool, it's really fun, and very easy to get through. Um, you can watch the videos, go back to them, start them one day, go back another time, but it's so much fun, okay. So Mr. Cruise Tips TV, you got it? Yeah, you found it. Okay, perfect. Let's get some questions answered here. Natalie Esber said, I know I'm coming in late, but I'm doing Holland America, New England and Canada cruise in July. You can't wait to do the Bay of Fundy and sit on the ocean floor and have lunch when the tide is out. So excited. Natalie, that sounds so dreamy. I've heard that that's really fun and I'd love to do that next time. Haha, <laughs> fun. Bay of Fundy. I did not mean to do that. Sorry. I'm not trying to be corny. It just happens. All right. Let's see. Oh, man. Um, Sidonia said, I'm going on the Grandiosa in December, Palermo, Malta, Barcelona, Marseille, and Genoa. Which was your favorite port of call? Sidonia, I want you to go to iTunes and listen to our podcast review of MSC Meraviglia for more information. It's called, our podcast is called Cruise Tips TV Unplugged. So listen to the review because we talk about the ports. But I'm going to say my favorite port, and then I'm going to tell you what Junior's favorite port was, and then I'm going to ask Mr. Cruise Tips TV. I think... My favorite port was Malta in, on that cruise. Malta is a beautiful island nation. The architecture is stunning. It's, the views everywhere are very dramatic. The people are lovely. Most of them speak English and they are so friendly and we just did a killer excursion. I would say Junior's favorite port was Barcelona because he got to do the segues and he loved that. And what about you, pal? What was your fave? You know, that's a tough one because it's, you, you do have to kind of separate them out into the activities because yeah. Malta was 
absolutely beautiful. And it was, like I've said before, like li living in or visiting a postcard. Yeah. But, you know, seeing how happy the uh, excursion made Junior, that was, that meant a lot to me. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with Barcelona. So good, huh? So um, we have this thing with our son when we're doing an activity or something where usually he somehow he ends up in front of us and we're always behind him. And we have learned that if you can see him smiling from the back, you know how you look at someone's back and you can see their cheeks from the back? He was smiling from, you could see his cheeks from the back. You could see him beaming. The same thing happened recently. We went horseback riding um, two weekends ago for Mr. Cruz Tips TV's birthday. And it was Junior's first time on a horse and the face that he was making. Oh my word, you guys. It was so rewarding and precious. He was just like enjoying something for the first time. He was extremely confident on the horse. More relaxed, I think, than I've ever seen anyone on a horse. And he just had this this sort of like um, permanent grin. It was really great as a parent to see that. So I would say that was our, that's our answer. Okay, Casey said, oh, Casey Chadwick said, you guys have been so helpful. We leave for our first ever cruise for our honeymoon in three weeks. Thanks CTTV for being so amazing and helpful. I feel ready and not stressed at all. Thank you, Casey. That feels so good to hear. That's exactly why we do this. It's exactly why we continue to do it. It makes us so happy when we get that feedback. What could be better than to share our experiences and to serve our community in that way? It's just the coolest thing ever. So thank you. Selena, the masterclass is a 20 video sequence or series designed to help you have an awesome, awesome cruise. Mr. Cruise Tips TV can link to it again. Use code all aboard for $5 off. There's packing and planning checklists in the masterclass. It's designed to be a step-by-step -step education for you to help you have an amazing cruise without having to poke through all of our videos to find what you need. It's just all in there. Okay, let's see here. Ah, oh, Denisha, you saw the Korean barbecue made you permagrin. Yeah, that was really fun. Okay, Miwa H said, I'm going on Norwegian Epic, leaving on June 9th for a seven-night Western Med, leaving from Barcelona. Anybody been on the ship? Any fun ideas of stuff to do on that ship? Ooh, Norwegian Epic. Oh, there's so much to do, Miwa. It's going to be overwhelming. I'd love to say go to the, um, the Brazilian... Uh, steakhouse, the Churrascaria, and enjoy the salad bar and the wonderful steak. Try some specialty dining. That would be my advice to you. Okay. Melissa, I'm not sure if they have almond milk on Carnival, but definitely speak with the maitre d' on day one. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Ruth, for those kind, sweet words. I really appreciate it. All right, everyone, we're going to wrap up. I would like to wish everyone a very, very happy Mother's Day, all the mamas out there. And as I also said on the podcast, I know that Mother's Day can be a very difficult holiday for some of you. Maybe you lost your mom. I know we have some friends in the audience who have lost children. And we just want you to know that we love you. We're thinking of you. Happy Mother's Day, whatever that means to you. Maybe you have pets and those are your babies. Happy Mother's Day. We're all mamas and dads in some way, right? We love all you guys. Thank you for being here for us always. You are amazing. We have the best community in the entire world. And have a fabulous, relaxing weekend. Get on our email list so we can notify you when we're going live. Follow us all over social media. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Cruise around the week! <laughs>